My name is Carolyn Workington and I am the Executive Director at South Essex Community Council. People who work at SECC tend to pull together to make big things happen. I think that's really special. I consider it a real privilege to live in the community that I serve, um, to be part of creating solutions for people who live here so that it's a better place for everyone, um, regardless of what your background or ethnicity or you know income, socioeconomic status might be, any of those sorts of things. Um, and so when I think about what SCCC does, I, I see it doing those things, right? We help everyone who comes through the door or who calls us regardless of whether or not we have the service. We partner with so many different people and we have relationships with so many other organizations that we can connect people really well. It's great that a lot of them you know, many of them are located here, so it makes it even easier for the client. I guess, you know, when I think about what the organization means to me, it's just, it's really, it's doing really important work. And it's not necessarily, we're not necessarily out in the forefront. We're not always a well-known name, not necessarily. But the people who do know us, have a lot of respect for our organization. They trust us. They know that if they come to us and you know they need something from us, that they're going to get it, um, and that we'll do it with the client at the center, and we'll do it with a lot of compassion and a lot of heart. And that's not something that you always find, you know, in an organization, in a community service organization either. Um, which I also think is is really special so you know it's been for me I've been here 23 years a total of 23 years I've been the executive director now for um, going on 14 um, it's a very special place um, and I don't think the work that it has to do in the community is done. SECC still has a lot of work to do and a lot of advocating to do. And so, you know, it's something that I continue to want to be a part of and I, I think that's it, special too. When you think about, you know, some folks who've been here for a long time, clearly, you know, that speaks to their own personal values and you know, the work that, the, maybe the legacy that they want to leave behind, um, you know, for their community. Do you want to say anything about the 50th? Do you have any last anything? anything specific about the 50th? Yeah, or anything else you want to say? Hmm, I've said a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been great. I just didn't know. Yeah, I don't have anything specific I don't think that I want to add. Um, 50 years, it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say, the other day you told me that story about the um, two girls that came down from Toronto. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just say that story? Yeah, sure, I can and say then that I can, story. And then I can, not, not even necessarily for this, but I can use that for something else. Absolutely, okay. sure. So, should I just go ahead and yeah. tell it? <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, when I was an employment consultant, I it was a Friday afternoon and I got a call from the front desk and someone, there were a couple of young women who were here needing some assistance. So I went up to see what the situation was. It turned out that these two young girls are probably 16, 17, maybe 18 years old had come here from Toronto looking for work. They had heard that there was a lot of work. They were working in a greenhouse. Um, and the, the, the issue was that they had been kicked out of wherever it was that they were living. One of them had lost her, had been fired, and they were living in um, a motel up the street. And they were about to get kicked out of there because they didn't have any money 
to pay for the hotel bill. And so, and so they were here in a panic. Um, they didn't have any money, they didn't have any food, they were about to be basically homeless. So we quickly worked out um, some arrangements for them to get them through the weekend. Uh, we paid the, made sure that we paid the, the hotel bill, the motel bill, you know, made sure that they had some food to get them through the weekend. And I had said, you know, you need to come and see me first thing Monday morning. Over the course of the weekend, the one had decided that she was going to go back to Toronto. She wasn't going to stay. But the other one showed up for the appointment on Monday morning. And, um, you know, I remember working with her. She was, she was very um, eager and very motivated to be um, successful. She wanted to make this work. Um, she ended up losing the job that she had, but we were able to find one fairly quickly for her afterwards. And, you know, and, and she was able to secure a place to live and, you know, eventually went about her way. She had a job, she had a place to live, everything was good. And the thing is, even now, it's like 20, 20 some years, maybe even longer um, later, I see her occasionally in town with her family she's married she's got three children and it, it's for me it's really gratifying to see someone that i worked with you know that i maybe had a hand in helping out a little bit right to see her happy and healthy and successful to see her with her children um, and to know that maybe i had a small hand in making her life you know the kind of life that she that she was really wanting when she was 17 or 18 years old. Oh, that's really yeah, that's really it is. Cool. It's cool that you see her. And yeah, family, like, yeah, really yeah. From and time to time. Too. Yeah, in here in Leamington. Oh yeah, God. so I I know she's still here. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, oh, comes full circle. Yeah, yeah. And you don't always <laughs> get that, right? Like you don't you don't always get to see what happens with your clients years later. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But you know, yeah, that's one of those nice that's one heart of those warming. special moments yeah. where, yeah, every once in a while I'll see her with her kids, and it makes me, you know, I'm happy. Yeah. I'm happy for her, and I'm happy to see her children so happy and healthy. And you know, I might have had a little hand. In yeah, that. definitely. And you were an employment. I was an employment consultant at the time. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Very cool stuff. Yep. Okay. And then, um, if you want to just look at the camera and say your name and just say, "I am helping people improving lives." My whole name? So yes, yeah, so say I'm Carolyn Workington and I'm helping people improving lives. Okay. I'm Carolyn Workington and I'm helping people and improving lives. Perfect. I am Debbie Daher, and I'm the manager of uh, financial resources. Ray Ann Scratch, and I'm a case manager currently in the Community Home Support Services Department. Uh, Mark Waibenga, uh, Department Coordinator for Volunteer Services. Sandy Boyven, Job Developer. My name is Emily Marakis. Um, when I left SCCC, I was the interim department um, leader for the Youth Services Department that ran the Job Connect program. I was promoted to department head to cover a maternity leave uh, for Joanne DeSantis. A total of 23 years. My name is Heather McPherson. I have been on the board, I believe, for 16 years. I've been with SECC for just over 24 years. Um, I've been here officially 15 years, but I've actually been here 17. I started and then left for a little bit and came back. 27 plus years. I've been working for SECC for over 21 years now. I worked for SECC for um, just over 10 years. I've always been kind of community minded. I wanted to make sure that there was um, good services within the community and SECC um, had that. It was probably just not one thing in particular, but everything that the organization does. There's so many things offered here and it just, it, it makes the most sense to keep them in our community. I used to work for another not-for-profit in the Essex area and my husband said to me, you have to get a job at SECC because that is the place to be. It's known 
for its reputation of being a good employer and that's where you want to be. Mm -hmm. So that's what drew me here. I think what really drew me initially was the opportunity to work with a wide variety of people, in particular youth at the time, um, because after that I went on to be become an employment consultant and um, a department coordinator. And so it gave me an opportunity to just meet a lot of different people, work with a lot of different people, and and get a better sense for, for who was living in our community. The employment services, the Meals on Wheels, the it, it, it seemed to do so much. So I thought if I want to help, instead of just doing one little thing, this organization does everything. Mm -hmm. Just being that it was a nonprofit, um, that's kind of where my heart is mm -hmm. and, and where I like to put my energy into. And uh, knowing that it was at the time helping people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of uh, the excitement that I had being able to help people. I have liked every position I've been in because I usually find something I'm drawn to a position. Um, so I have great memories in each one of my positions. But the reason I really enjoyed Meals on Wheels and the day program when I used to work there was connecting with the seniors. I really have a very soft spot for them um, and uh, that's why I liked it. I have to say I really enjoyed uh, when I was department coordinator for Community Home Support Services because it incorporated both the aspects of working with seniors as part of Community Home Supports, but it was also partly working and coordinating volunteers for the organization. I started as a part-time transit driver. I do have my bus license. So I started part-time, casually came in, um, really enjoyed the clients and, and uh, how rewarding it was. Um, so I ended up taking on a permanent full-time position um, with the transit department as a dispatcher scheduler. And then, uh, yeah, continued on from there. I worked in the home maintenance program, security check, friendly visitation, meals. And then, so I ended up um, then becoming a case manager and uh, I've been loving it ever since. Well, helping people improving lives, it's so simple. So I think that's what I like about it. It's just so simple. It's so easy to understand. And it really is the core of what the organization does. It just wants to help people and wants to improve lives, whether it's one life, a hundred lives, but, but it really is just about the, the basic. Everything boils back down to just kind of just helping people and improving lives in the community. And it's, I mean, if we all did that, lived that way, it's just yeah basic but yeah. empowering yeah city um, so that worked as a natural fit for me and I just feel that um, it was really about the community services and knowing that I was going to you know have this as my permanent home for, for me and my family and what the community services were available to the area okay. and you talked about the favorite part of your job but do you have a favorite memory or a year that really stood up to you I think what stands out for me most is the people that I worked with because I feel that um, it takes a special group of people to work for a not-for-profit organization. Um, I feel that the people are all um, very genuine, um, very caring, and, and they all have the same goal in mind and that's to help people. Um, so I think it really, uh, it's the people that really uh, stood out for me. Um, I think that one of the examples um, that was a fun year for me was the year that we moved from the Princess Center to this location here. Um, it was interesting how we all got together and pulled through and basically pulled some all-nighters over the weekend together to, uh, and it was rewarding knowing that our services were expanding and that we outgrew our space and that um, there was a need for our programs to grow and take it to the next level. Um, so moving here was, uh, was, was a unique uh, experience for us. But also the fact that when you work for a not-for-profit organization, you're really, um, your funding comes from fundraising events. And I think that, you know, how um, our team always got together to organize uh, fundraisers, whether it was a, a gala or a golf tournament or, um, you know, any type of service. And we always just got together and just had fun preparing for it. And it was all volunteer. So it was, it was just that extra component that was part of your job. Carolyn was telling us the other day yeah. about that all nighter. Yeah. I could not believe that. You want to hear a funny story too? Mm -hmm. I announced my pregnancy with you at that week on that weekend. Are you serious? Oh, yes. Because oh so God. we moved here 
Um, and um, my sister uh, was diagnosed with terminal cancer and she, um, we had done a head shaving um, fundraiser, not fundraiser, she was losing her hair and so she shaved her head. So we were all at her house that week, the night before the, the weekend we moved. Um, and we all shaved our heads. Like it was kind of a spontaneous uh, thing that we did with her because the hairdresser came over. Um, so it was funny because I came to work that weekend to move bald um, and someone made a joke and said, you know, they said, oh my God, like, you know, I, I said something about, oh, look at me, I'm bald and pregnant or something like that because I was expecting you and that's oh how I told God. people. Oh my God. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting you. So that's crazy. That weekend? Oh my God. Yeah. Funny. Well, you were born in 1999 and we moved in um, 1998. Oh my God, that's funny. So yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> and also, I didn't want to do any heavy lifting. <laughs> yeah, I was, was going to say, that's like the perfect photo. Yeah. Like, but no, I did no. do a lot. <laughs> no CBD here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Oh my god, that's fun. Um, so oh, I think I answered that on... Uh, oh, I answered the wrong question. No, you didn't. Yeah, because you said, what stands out? I said the people, and I had something I was going to say about Carolyn there. You could say it. But you didn't, you didn't answer it wrong. No, but uh, share a favorite memory. And could you share a favorite memory of your year that really stood out? And it was the, the move. So I answered you that can, already. You can keep going. So I'll go back. Because yeah. <laughs> I think when you said, um, what was your favorite part of the job here? And I said the people. Um, yes. You can say whatever. Okay, we can go back to that. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so to go along with the fact that uh, the point of being made about the people and how special they are, and it takes a special group of people and they all have the same philosophy and that is to help others. Um, they're very rooted here, like for as long as I can remember, there's people here that are still working here since I left or even long before that. Um, Carolyn Workington is a great example of that. I worked alongside of her for many youth programs. Um, and she's always made it very evident that she was, you know, her passion, her dedication came through everything she ever did. Um, and I think that she's always been known to lead with her heart. Um, and that uh, makes it really, uh, you know, I can understand now why she's the executive director of SCCC. Um, now, looking back on the time you spent here, what would you say comes to mind when you think of SCCC or what does it mean to you? I think if I had to put it into two words, I would say community um, and foundation. And I think that um, it's really about a, a collection of resources and services that we're providing, um, but that they're going to really instill a foundation and uh, meeting the needs of, of what the, the community members really need and be able to set a strong foundation for them to pursue a uh, future, uh, either whether it's a career um, or even just uh, helping them with their disability or anything it is that they, they need. So I think community and, and foundation. Okay, and then just to kind of wrap up, do you want to, do you have any final thoughts about the 50th? Or is there anything else you want to get out there? Um, I also wanted to say that it's kind of interesting how it's come around full circle, um, twofold, I guess you could say, because um, as an employer now, as a marketing director for Muji Farms, we have directly benefited from the Job Connect program. I don't know if you still call it that um, per se, but we have um, employed a young person through the program um, in a, um, the design field, uh, so graphics design, um, and we have since employed that person full time because of the the services that SECC has offered. So I think that um, you know the fact that I used to be an employment counselor and and was able to refer our company to the services um, and also provide a, a, another opportunity. Um, and I mean, I don't know if people realize who's sitting across from me, but you know, just a lot of great memories, but one that really sticks out in my mind was a gentleman I used to deliver Meals on Wheels when I was my very first job here. Um, and there was a gentleman in Wheatley and um, I would deliver every weekend to him 
and he had this dog um, that he loved and cherished who wasn't doing so well um, but every time I would stop in to go see him he was always coming up with a creative way to make his dog feel better he was just a very kind soul um, and that always stuck in my memory and he'd always say to me it's so nice to see somebody smiling and wishing you a good day um, and knowing that I was probably the only person to see him each day or on that day it was important for me to you know put my best foot forward for him. Uh, so one of my favorite things I was able to do at SECC was uh, I remember in the winter time we ended up doing a seniors Santa, secret Santa. So we had a, a giving tree and uh, we asked for some of our isolated seniors who have usually spend Christmas or the holidays alone uh, and we asked them for some things that they would like or enjoy and we had staff and volunteers that purchased those items and we wrapped them up and we were able to deliver them and every single one of them had such a huge reaction and just joy it was, there was a lot of tears but the joy on their faces just to think that they were thought of at Christmas time or the holidays and that somebody cared. It was just so impactful and it, it, I was just very fortunate to be involved in that um, and to make that difference. So there's probably a few, I mean there's many um, over the years, but any time um, I get asked to help read um, staff recognition awards or change maker award nominations, scholarships, things like that, because those are things, especially the staff recognition, we don't see the employees on a day-to-day -day basis or how they interact with a client or how they interact with each other. So to get that insight into what actually happens, it just, that that's what, I guess I like that. You know, it, it, I, I get to see um, what other people think. I get to see this person went above and beyond and for a coworker to recognize that, take time out of their day to write it down, that's pretty special. You know, I've met so many people over the years and made some wonderful friendships and, and just the colleagues here, being able to work with the colleagues here and we're, we're in the people helping people business. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why we're here. We're here because of helping people, improving lives. And that idea of these, these, the things that we do grow out of the needs of the people. They grow out of needs of the community and, and that we want to help people. And maybe we don't have all the answers, but the idea is we can find out who to send you to. To, to help you. So it's connecting community, connecting people and growing and that growth. I think our mission is like speaks for itself, like helping people improving lives. Honestly, it's so important to help people. I'm, I've always looked at it as helping lift somebody to their full potential. It's not that, you know, I'm going to do something for them. It's this organization is based on helping people achieve their goals. Um, and it could be as simple as getting a nice hot meal a, a day or having somebody call them and talk to them and ask them how they're doing. So it's always about helping those individuals reach their full potential or their full wish. Everything we do here um, just benefits our community. And, and again, that's been the biggest, I guess the biggest uh, accomplishment that I can say is that we're able to to at the end of the day make sure that people have that type of service locally and the supports that they need so that they they know that they're connected and that um, at the end of the day um, Leamington can be their home mm -hmm. Kingsville weekly <laughs> yeah, yeah, <for> sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean there's so much that comes to mind but I mean community caring helping um, the employees, I guess, I, th I think are, are what come to mind too, because like you just said, everyone is so welcoming and cares so deeply for what they're doing. You can tell. Um, the leadership of the organization, I think, uh, has really good insight into everything that, that needs to be done. Um, and, and oh, 
just hearing them talk too, like you can just feel the the care they have for the organization and um, everyone just sort of wears their heart on their sleeve here. So that's, I mean, it's it's all sort of that that community feeling of the family, the the eagerness to help and go above and beyond. I guess for me what SECC means is it, it truly is a community. Um, it's almost like a, a second family, um, you know, and it, it's not just about the staff. I know for many of our clients we're like a family um, and for many members of the community uh, there's a real sense of um, kinship and, uh, and family togetherness here. Um, a lot of times the community may not know about us, uh, who we are, or maybe they've heard of us but don't know exactly what we do. Um, and I would really have to say that if SECC were not present uh, in the community, um, I think our absence would really be felt. So uh, it's a really integral part of the community and I'm uh, very happy uh, to be a part of that uh, legacy of helping people and improving lives. SECC just has this knack for looking ahead, for really being able to adapt and change and see what the needs are almost going to be before they happen. I don't really know how to explain how it does that. Like obviously it's it's just being involved in that community and seeing small changes and realizing they're gonna amount to something big. Um, but I would say that's probably what's kept us here for 50 years and probably what will keep us here longer is just that ability to, to adapt, um, to change. Um, the work that we do here matters and it matters in a big way. There's so many different things that, that we do and that we're doing and adapting and changing is just huge. Um, nobody else does the services that we do in this community. I'm very proud uh, of the work that we do and the job that I'm able to do. It's just, I'm, it's very rewarding. And hearing the stories of the good work that's being done, that's probably the most favorite part of my day. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think the average person really understands sometimes the amount of, of, of work and effort um, that goes into assisting someone. You know, we try very hard to walk with people as opposed to doing things for people. We want to work with them, but I, I don't think the average person really understands the amount of support and encouragement um, and, and, and work that goes into, you know, all of that. They, they don't necessarily understand all of the effort that our staff put in uh, to make sure that someone is successful. But the pandemic really bore that out, right? We, we had to come up with other ways to serve people and the staff were really, you know, they went above and beyond to make sure people got what they needed during a time that was really chaotic and uncertain and stressful, not just for the clients that we serve, but for the staff. And I have to give the staff a lot of kudos for, you know, really stepping up to the plate. And it wasn't even just caring for our clients, but, you know, staff went out of their way to show care and concern for the broader community. You know, healthcare workers, seniors who were, you know, isolated in long-term care facilities. It, staff didn't need to do the things that they did. They didn't need to take time out to put, you know, activity kits together and make cards and write messages to people, but they did, right? And I think that is a really classic illustration of, of what the people are like who work here. Um, you know, people who, who work here really do want people to, you know, be happy, be healthy, be successful, uh, to walk away satisfied, right, with th that they got what they needed. The interesting thing about this organization, um, when you think about its history, you know, this, this SECC was founded by a group of, of community members who realized that there were immigrants coming to this community and they couldn't access services. They would have to go to Windsor to get them. We serve people from birth to death. Our services span the lifetime of a human being, right? We provide, you know, child care. We provide services for, for youth and young people, for children, 
for people who are looking for work and we provide you know services for seniors so that they can you know be independent at home and and you know live independently right mm -hmm. and healthfully at home so and I think ours is a very unique service model too it's not one that you'll see um, very often mm -hmm. For me at SECC, it's been a great career um, and I think that this organization has gone through ebbs and flows, um, but we've always stuck to our core value of helping people and improving lives. And so for me, it's important that we have always continue, even after I leave, that this organization continues on that path and I'm sure it will. 50 years is huge, right? 50 years of us providing meals to people, 50 years of connectedness. Um, for the next 50, let's, let's try to do better. Let's make sure that uh, the services we have are offered locally and that we can continue to be that advocate, to be that voice for people. And let's just get more people involved. Probably just that I hope we're here for another 50, for another 100, because um, I think we do some fabulous work here and it's not done so there's a lot more to be done a lot more people to help and I hope we can keep it going I know funding is always a challenge but uh, I think with the teams in place in the organization we'll figure it out and we'll be here for a lot longer South Essex Community Council just it's so exciting thinking of 50 years like wow I've been you know, 20 years a part of that, but 50 years, what a statement. Like, what a statement to the community that we have weathered the storms, you know, and that we have come out standing tall. You know what, it's been a really amazing time. I joined the organization during their 25th anniversary year, and it's hard to believe that I've been here now for half of the agency's uh, existence. Um, we're a hidden gem out in the community, um, and I encourage people to get to know what we do, um, get to know who we are, get involved, get active. Um, volunteering is a great way to give back, uh, touch people's lives, um, and just help make uh, South Essex a, a great place to live and grow. Community, right? That means it means everything. A community can be cultural, it can be spiritual, it can be um, just anything that helps keep our community together. And I feel that SECC is is that community. Amazing community. Compassion. And then if you want to just look I'm gonna say community just because it's, it's a, a big part of of the community, keeps it going, helps those that need help, provides services, or tells you where else you can get the services if they're not uh, provided here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think I think that's a big a big word for, for the organization. I am Debbie Daher, and I am helping people and improving lives. I'm Mark Wybenga, and I'm helping people and improving lives.